Welcome to the Bankers Leadership Series in association with Click, looking at data analytics uh, and extending it from the boardroom to the front line. Hi, I'm Daniel Subramaniam, uh, Data Analytics and Visualization Lead at Barclays. Uh, Duncan Ash from Click, I'm the Global Financial Services Lead. I'm Joy McKnight, Deputy Editor of The Banker. Hi, I'm Jonathan Trey Clark from Bank of America Merrill Lynch. I'm the Head of Strategy and Advisory for our Global Transaction Services business. Xavi Gonzalez from CaixaBank. Um, I am the Head of the Big Data Analytical Tools. In Chapter 1 of this five-part series, we're going to be looking at the challenges and the benefits of rolling out a business intelligence solution across from the boardroom to the front line and the agents in the field. I think it's interesting today that you know, the financial institutions are facing a lot of competition. They're facing changing uh, behavior from their clients. But also, there is a real need for strict risk management and control in a highly dynamic market. So business intelligence really feeds into that. Uh, to have the relevant, actionable, and timely information that you need at your fingertips is really what banks are looking for and is really almost like a holy grail. So I'd like to turn to Jonathan first and really to discuss from a strategic point of view the business intelligence, how is, how is that being deployed within your organization today? Thanks, Joy. So <coughs> it's a great question. I think it's around our ability to make those quick data-driven decisions um, in, as you say, our industry is continuously evolving and changing every day. But at Bank of America, I would say we come down to one very simple principle, which is we look at data-driven decision-making. And we use that as a context around analytics. If you look at our competition, around our customer landscape, if we look at our businesses and our product portfolio, the very economics of the markets that we operate in and where we might choose to go to into new products or new services and solutions. So we see a lot of our leading banks, not just ourselves, but other banks in the world, looking at 360 degrees views of the client. I mean, at the end of the day, we're a client-centric business. That's what we're trying to drive to as an outcome. We think about it from a marketing perspective, so where we're targeting specific initiatives or specific products for, or solutions for our client base in those certain demographics. We think about it from the point of view of risk identification and mitigation. So we're continuously scanning not just what we are thinking about in terms of our com the commercialization of our business, but the very way that that business commercialization takes place in of itself. And that's, as you say, it's actually, to some extent, a regulatory and legal obligation that we have there as well. And then there are other things which are perhaps more obvious, maybe fraud prevention and uh, sort of portfolio management. But overall, business intelligence for us um, supports all the decisions that we make and allows us to drive to, uh, we hope, better business outcomes for our clients. Okay, and Daniel, from uh, Barclays' perspective, and then also a data analytics perspective, yeah, how is sure. it being business um, intelligence being deployed? I think that's a really interesting one. I mean, certainly building on, on what's been said, you know, that's, that's the fundamental. But the real question is how we deploy that information and how you get the right bits of information to the right people to make appropriate decisions. So often we'll find the repositories of data are quite similar, and they're used by multiple people. But actually, the executives in the C-suite are looking to drive broad strategic decisions, you know, understand that data in a very different way from the operational leads on the ground that are actually churning that on a day-to-day -day basis. So really the question is how we, you know, how that gets deployed to be very targeted and specific to the audience um, without, without compromising sort of the data quality or data validity that you have on that basis. Okay. And Chabe, from Kasha Bank's point of mm. view. Well, in, in our bank, I think that we have a similar situation like yours, because at the, at the beginning you always start always in the commercial department, sales department, and risk department, and fraud. But after that, we have expanded all these these projects because we have at this moment more than 90 projects, uh, analytical projects, and we have uh, some experience in in human resources, operations, IT department, audit, internal audit, for example, because we want uh, to offer the experience to all the employees to spread the data literacy. So Duncan, from Click's perspective, which has a broader view over the financial services industry, uh, is, does what they're saying resonate with you? Are you seeing in any other sort of areas where the business intelligence is being deployed? Sure, no, I think uh, what, what everyone said has resonated very strongly. Uh, I think when you look at the, the different participants in the, uh, the banking supply chain, from the, 
the people who work in head office group functions right through to the people who work in branches and maybe advising on the sale of products like mortgages. Uh, they all have different requirements, so the, the relevance and the timeliness of the data is very important. What you can deliver to someone in a group function in head office is very different to what you deliver to someone who works in a branch. So we have to think very carefully about how you, um, how you slice up that data and give the right pieces of information to all the different people in that process at the right time and present it in a way which they can really consume it. You, you can't make it uh, too complicated. You need to, to always think about how you simplify that information and get it out to j just the right, in, right piece of information at the right time to the right person. Okay, but there's a lot of challenges in deploying a business intelligence solution, especially when you have a very complex uh, information uh, IT uh, infrastructure. How, what do you think are the biggest challenges in terms of aggregating and uh, analyzing across different business units? Chabe, can I ask you? Well, let me see that uh, the first challenges that you think normally in this type of projects are technological challenges, of course, infrastructure, the data architecture, and so on. But I think that there is a very important challenge also is the cultural change management that you have to do in your company because the, it, appear, it appears new roles, new committees, new procedures. So uh, this is very complex when you have a company with thousands of employees and a, and a, and a very old company like us, for example, that we have more than one, 100 years. And this is, for me, the most important challenge in this type of projects. Okay. Jonathan, does that resonate with you? It does, but I think the word that we haven't said, actually, is, is context. Mm. Right? So, to Duncan's point, the information can mean different things to different people. And I think that also parlays into your culture and change management option as well. So, where we've thought about the structures of our information landscape and how we're driving those decisions out of that of the intelligence that comes from it. What we really try to do is think about the context. So as an example, um, if you're a, a sales manager, for example, then what you'll be looking for from the same set of information associated with a client is very different to what the client will be looking for. But it's the same data that you're looking at. So the lens through which you view that information, and I guess to Duncan's point, the level at which you sit within the organization, I think has a very important relevance and construct around the way you look at the information. So when you're building these solutions, you have to consider how they will be used, what is the output that you're looking for from them, and then, as I think we'll go on to say further, when you think about the accuracy and the timeliness of those data sets as well. So, But yes, I would agree that there is a general trend towards big data and data intelligence, um, but the actual, whilst it's easy to articulate the problem, if you like, the actual opportunity that comes from that, um, I think is, is harder to quantify and that's where I would urge people to be careful. I think from an analytics perspective, often you know, the technological challenges that you bring up there, you, once you've got your strategy in place, are actually, they're new challenges. And much of this technology is only being enabled now due to different bits of technological advancement. So I think your big data is a, is a great one. You know. Big data has always existed. It's now our ability to do something with that and actually get meaningful insights out of it. So in lots of ways, this, the problem hasn't changed. It's the way that we're able to solve it and the solutions become a lot more finessed and a lot more precise. And the way we can bring new bits of data together and combine those leads to new, new interesting insights. But fundamentally, the same, same challenges being solved. I think there was a, a, uh, one of my members of my team described the problem quite nicely. She said that uh, the problem with big data is that everyone can point at the haystack and say, look, there's the data, there's the data. But actually what you want to know is where's the needle mm. in that haystack? That's the intelligence that you're looking for. Yeah, and, and I, th I think in the, in, uh, the context that, that you were talking about, Dan, in, in finessing that information, um, you, you think about the participants. There are so many people, so organizations we're working with who have thousands of branches and in which case they have you know, tens of thousands of employees. Um, the opportunity to, to make their lives better, to give them better information, more timely information, and to make a difference to the, to the top line um, sales effectively uh, is, is very significant. You only need to improve the performance of a person by 1%. That has a very significant impact. So and, and I think that's the sort of thing we can really do. Okay. In chapter two of this five-part series, we're going to be looking at big data and continuing on this conversation.